Hello, this is Matthew. Uh, we ended uh, uh, the questions in part two. That was the end of her questions, and we felt that we uh, finished it more abruptly, and Tulu uh, amazingly feels the spirit of Esther that she wants to keep on speaking. So she um, sat down and wrote some more questions. So this is part three. Not sure how long it's going to go. <clears throat> But I've been outvoted by Esther and uh, Tulu, and uh, I'm just, you know, like we were saying, I'm just a servant of the Lord. He does serve everybody, and I, I'm sure the people of heaven want to continue to uh, hear from Esther and maybe some of you people on earth. Uh, so I'll just uh, let uh, Tulu ask the first question. Hi, this is Esther. Uh, Tulu, uh, welcome back. And uh, I'll, I await your first question. Thank you, Esther. So my first question is, how do you think your story can inspire others, particularly women, to stand up for justice and righteousness? Um, first of all, I um, shared quite a bit uh, in those two hours. And um, there's certain ways that you can serve your husband. Uh, there's certain ways... Uh, that uh, a married female uh, can serve her husband. Um, <clears throat> the number one thing uh, Matthew's uh, mother told him is uh, God uh, commands women to respect the husband. And uh, so many uh, females fail in that regard, have got complaints about their husband and complain about the husband. And they go to prayer meetings and they say that the husband is a heathen, he doesn't go to church. Uh, he's uh, he's rude. Uh, I, I wish that God would change. And they share all this information in the prayer meeting, gossiping about their husband, and that's total disrespect. Um, you know, uh, if there there was a person who's invited you around for dinner, a host, an important person in the room, uh, and you're at a dinner table, and they said something, if you spoke up and disrespected the host and argued with him, uh, it, it isn't good. And so many, uh, many times uh, respect is needed. So you can, uh, you can take from my story that uh, I really respected my husband. Uh, when uh, my husband uh, saved me uh, and saved the Jews, my, my level of respect went even further. You notice he was even watching whether I would ever respect him more than Mordecai. And Mordecai was my father, and uh, he noticed the shift, and uh, he became really happy. Um, so I'd encourage Christian women, uh, whether they're single or not to be single, is to pursue intimacy with Jesus. Now, now if you're intimate, if you've got a good a relationship uh, with someone, uh, you can meet them, you can meet them anytime, you can pick up the phone and ring them anytime, you, you may not ring them after 10 o'clock at night, but you know at 8 o'clock in the morning you can ring them, you can always contact them, you can uh, meet them for lunch, uh, you can ask them to do your favours, uh, uh, if they're knowledgeable you could get them to teach you things, so, so why do you treat Jesus differently, you know? Uh, so many uh, people don't have a good relationship with Jesus. They they consider uh, prayer like something laborious, something that has to be done, something that they have to do. Um, when you've got a relationship uh, with someone uh, and a good relationship, time flies and you really enjoy having a conversation. So um, Matthew's got a book called Seven Keys to Intimacy with Jesus and he didn't do any research for the book. He just sat down and tried to list uh, the things that uh, impacted him, uh, that allowed him to get intimacy. And he's got an uh, intimate relationship with Jesus. He's met Jesus hundreds of times in visions. He's met Jesus in the flesh a number of times on earth. Uh, he's been to heaven. Uh, Jesus has showed him his angelic kingdom. Jesus has introduced him to saints in heaven. Jesus has given him open access 
uh, to his kingdom. And uh, you can develop a, a really close relationship with Jesus. And uh, one of uh, those steps uh, would uh, possibly to be reading Matthew's book, Seven Keys to Intimacy. Um, if you know how to develop a really close intimacy with Jesus, you go ahead and do that. Uh, but this book, uh, not that Matthew's selling it, it's just a good guide for that. So intimacy with Jesus is achieved through reading the word of God, through two-way conversations with God, uh, through obedience with God, uh, by, by mixing with the right people. Um, so that's the number one thing I'd go after if uh, I was a female uh, in in the kingdom. Um, learn to honour God and uh, respect God and uh, come to know God and Jesus for who they really are, not what man mm. says they are. But uh, do some research and invest some time and invest yourself into uh, getting to know them and uh, and and developing a, a relationship full of faith. Thank you, Esther. And um, what sort of reward did you get in heaven? I know you did say you're well rewarded. Can you just give us a little bit of insight into that? There's a, a select number of uh, women uh, in heaven, uh, Mary Magdalene is part of it. And uh, Princess Dinah has just joined that circle of women too. Uh, there's a certain, a certain circle of women that are like an advisory board for the women of heaven. And uh, uh, Princess Dinah was well known on earth, but she's been very hungry and very obedient in heaven and she's uh, joined those ranks not mostly because she's been hanging out with mary magdalene and Ma mary magdalene has personally uh, mentored her and tutored her uh, so i'm on this a uh, circle of women like advisory board and uh it's like uh women come to us uh with their issues and uh, their trials and their issues and uh we uh, give advice and we give a direction uh, from the Holy Spirit for them. And um, it's a very responsible position, uh, just like I was the queen uh, over my kingdom. I'm like a queen in heaven and I've uh, been rewarded uh, with that place of authority in heaven. And, um, <clears throat> of course, all the people descended uh, from the Jews uh, really loved me and I'm really revered and honoured uh, in heaven. And uh, I, I mainly just uh, dole out advice and direction uh, for people. I've, I've, I've got the prophetic gifts of, of prophecy and uh, the spirit of counsel and wisdom and the seven spirits of God. And uh, so I operate in a very high level of wisdom and uh, the women that approach me uh, and need my help, uh, get my help and, uh, and people prosper and people go on uh, from level to level. I, I set uh, the women assignments and I, I set them uh, tasks to do. Um, people of heaven uh, listening to this have all read all of Matthew's books and uh, they're very aware of uh, seven keys to intimacy of Jesus and part of the audience are listening here are uh, going back to that book uh, today. Uh, it's been highlighted. You, you may wonder uh, if this uh, message is for people on earth or people in heaven and it's for both uh, but uh, the people of heaven are paying a whole lot more attention uh, to this word because it's a relevant uh, now word and uh, because I've said uh, that uh, that's a good book um, there's so many people uh, that have to uh, go to another level in their intimacy with Jesus even though they're in heaven. Thank you, Esther. And what kind of role do Mordecai play in heaven at the moment? And are you still close, like you were uh, on her? Mordecai, uh, in, one way to explain it is Mordecai could almost be my husband. Uh, he's so close. It's like uh, a bond that you'd have uh, with, with your partner. And uh, Mordecai, uh, my, my parents are in heaven and uh, and I'm close to them, but I'm not nearly as close to my parents as I am to Mordecai. And uh, Mordecai is is like uh, I'm doing with the women. Uh, Mordecai is uh, doing with the men of heaven. And he's a prophet and uh, he's 
in council. He's not like a counsellor. Um, he's writing. He's teaching. Uh, he he uh, has a really good understanding of the Old Testament, a really good understanding of the New Testament. He meets uh, with saints and interviews saints. Uh, he's got good relationships with all the writers of the New Testament. Uh, he sat in their lectures. He, he's learned from them, and uh, he's uh, bringing the collective uh, wisdom of the Old and New Testament uh, to the people of Christ, uh, to the people uh, in heaven. Um, he's uh, busy uh, counselling people, directing people, and guiding people, and uh, he's managing uh, really well. Uh, my husband is also uh, in heaven, and he's got a place in leadership in heaven. Uh, you may uh, be surprised that never mentioned that uh, there was a salvation of my husband, but my husband come to really admire my faith and looked into my faith and really respected my faith and uh, chose to uh, serve uh, the the uh, Is Israel, the Jewish God, and uh, his kingdom uh, prospered uh, because of that. Thank you, um, Esther. So what is the best way of bringing people to the knowledge of our God? Since you experienced it, you were able to bring King Xerxes to the knowledge of your God through the way you acted to him. So encouraging Christians today, what would be the best way for us to be able to shine the light of Jesus to people around us? Um, That's exactly what they need to do. Um, shine the light of Jesus. If you develop intimacy with Jesus, if you learn what Jesus taught in his 50 commands and his 54 parables, if you put them to work in your life, if you start to walk and obey uh, the teachings of Jesus, then uh, you'll be developed. Uh, you'll learn to start to walk in the spirit. And as you walk in the spirit, uh, you'll start to uh, do Christ-like things and act Christ-like. And soon enough, you'll be shining and, uh, with more and more help and more and more devotion, uh, you'll <laughs> have the Isaiah chapter 60 prophesied a glory start to uh, come into your life. And when the glory of God is in your life and, and there's light shining out of your skin, uh, then uh, people are attracted to you. People are open to you. And um, you just... Uh, need to learn uh, to, how to uh, in, imitate Jesus. The Apostle Paul uh, taught, uh, said, imitate me as I imitate Christ. And um, it's uh, when you don't understand Christ, when you don't have any understanding of what he taught, what he believed in and what he practiced, it, it would be hard for you to imitate Christ. Uh, many people believe that you can't practice uh, what Christ did, or you can't be like uh, Christ. Uh, they believe that uh, Jesus was divine, we're not divine, and uh, he had supernatural help, but he had the help of the Holy Spirit, and there's been other men who've become uh, very uh, Christ-like, and as you become Christ-like and ever-giving, ever-compassionate, ever-kind and patient, long-suffering, enduring with people, being kind, um, <clears throat> As you develop the Christ-like character and start to shine his light uh, through your character, you'll draw all men to yourself. And uh, as you spend time with people, they'll want to know what makes you tick and they'll want to know about your faith. And uh, uh, slowly they'll ask you um, what they need to do uh, to become like you. Um, but if you don't, <clears throat> if you don't honestly believe that you can be like Christ if if you don't uh, think it's possible, if you religiously don't think uh, a human being uh, could be like Christ, then you'll never attain to it. You'll never uh, get to that. You know, um, in history, no one had ran a four-minute mile. They didn't think it was possible until a runner called Roger Bannister uh, broke the four-minute mile and now, uh, Matthew's heard uh, over 500 people since then have have won, ran a four-minute mile. Um, the, the reason uh, that 
the 500 people hadn't done this no one thought it was possible and uh and jesus made a way he made it possible um john says uh in 1 john 2 6 he that says he abides in him must walk just as he walked uh and uh, that's the apostle john saying that uh you if if you're close to jesus uh you can walk like jesus you can behave like jesus and the apostle paul said imitate me as i imitate christ and um uh he he was imitate Im imitating uh christ the apostle paul said it's no longer i that liveth but christ that liveth in me and um you better understand it you better know that uh when people met the apostle paul though uh meeting jesus christ himself just in a different body uh, so you can uh, develop a flavor of christ you can uh, develop such a uh, uh, intimacy with jesus that you become the aroma of christ and it draws people it repels people when you're very christ-like people can react and uh, possess people uh, can uh, can uh, um, uh, manifest uh, but it also draws people who are hungry uh, for answers. And this world is a world that really needs answers. It really needs genuine, honest, kind, loving people around who are prepared to give and prepared to have compassion, prepared to love, uh, prepared not to be selfish and to be humble and generous and kind and loving and uh, not looking out for number one, but looking out for the welfare of others. Thank you, Esther. And how will you describe Jesus? Jesus is um, Jesus is just another level. Like uh, uh, it's one thing to imitate Christ. Uh, we heard uh, from Abel uh, before that uh, Abel can have lots of conversations in his head at once, but not a lot of people in heaven can do that. Uh, but uh, Jesus. Uh, when you look in his eyes, you can see uh, the galaxies. You, you can look into his eyes and see creation being born. Uh, when when Jesus looks at you in the eyes, uh, you can see a reflection of your life in his eyes. And you can see uh, the things that you did wrong, the mistakes that you made. Uh, you can see everything that you've ever done. And uh, But what comes out of his eyes, instead of judgment and shame and guilt and condemnation, just overwhelming love uh comes out of his eyes and it just knocks you over it's so powerful it'll knock you to the ground and uh as you get to know jesus he's just uh the best friend and uh and uh really loving but you don't have to wait to get to heaven uh to meet uh jesus matthews uh sat face to face with jesus and conversed with him uh in the flesh and uh so you, you don't have to wait uh, to get to heaven, to know Jesus, you can know Jesus uh, really well. And uh, as Matthew describes Jesus' eyes and, and Jesus here, he actually transported to heaven and he's actually uh, looking in Jesus' eyes. And uh, if uh, you can imagine Jesus has a beard and it's like um, you see uh, sort of uh, Muslim guys uh, have a beard and it's neatly trimmed with clippers. It's a really... Uh, neat beard it's not a stringy sort of unkept beard and uh, he's got uh, the deepest uh, eyes and some people say he's got blue eyes uh, when Matthew met him in the flesh he had brown eyes so depends on what you perceive uh, to be the color of his eyes um, you remember it says in 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 the um in the Ten Commandments not to make a graven image uh, of, mm. of of God and uh, so having a picture of Jesus on the wall, as good as uh, artists say that uh, that's what Jesus looks like, um, ha having that picture uh, on your wall is breaking the Ten Commandments. And people may say the law have passed away. Well, adultery hasn't and honouring the Sabbath hasn't and respecting your parents hasn't. And uh, so making graven images is wrong too. So uh, Jesus is... The most remarkable friend, uh, he'll hold your hand and 
you skip through the water and talk to him. He's uh, very funny. He makes jokes. Uh, he knows all your favorite songs. He he knows all your favorite Bible verses. He he knows how to speak in code. He knows your code. He knows your language. He knows all of your memories. He can speak into any one of your memories. He can bring up uh, something from your life on earth or he can bring up something that happened last week in heaven. Uh, he uh, He's aware of your thoughts. He's aware of your concerns. He's aware of your worries. He's aware of your past. He's aware of your future. Um, he's just the most amazing, fascinating guy. And um, Matthew's been having trouble with his sleep and uh, and uh, having trouble getting to sleep and and sleeping and um he's he's been on a journey with god and talking to god at night and uh it's good to uh meet uh jesus father and know his father and uh god uh when matthew can't sleep god will just say let's talk for a while and matthew might talk for half an hour an hour and just have a conversation um it, it really is something i i pursue how to hear god's voice is a book Matthew uh, has, and he's got a book uh, called Conversations with God, book one to three. And you can learn more about how to speak to God and Jesus uh, in how to hear God's voice. And you can see what sort of conversations you can have with God. And God is an amazing entity too. And he's given all authority to his son. And the same eyes that uh, you see in Jesus or in the Father, there's just so much more authority in God's eyes and so much more authority in his voice and um he's tired at the moment um the, the earth and, and 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 things have worn him out um it's a lot of suffering on earth and god takes it personally and this war and hamas and israel is really taking a toll on the people of heaven they've had to switch up the music in heaven and uh, play a lot of uh, warfare songs and encouraging songs uh, the battle should be the Lord's, you know, the battle, the Holy Spirit should reign and uh, he's not reigning on earth at the moment and um, uh, they're all concerned. But Jesus, Jesus knows, um, Michael Jackson said once that, you know, uh, you enter songs in a competition and it can be like your song can come 900th in the week with all people's votes or it could be song 150 most popular in the week or it can be 100 or it can be in the top five or top one. And if you haven't read the Michael Jackson books, uh, you probably wouldn't know about it. But it, he, Michael Jackson said there, there's a song that's like 150 and that's a pretty good song out of all the musicians in heaven, the 150th most popular song for the week. But um, he'll said he, he'll see Jesus uh, walking down the road and he'll meet Jesus and Jesus will be singing that song. And it didn't come in the top five and it's not the most popular song in heaven, but he's happy with that song. And some artists uh, have songs on an album and, and it's not a single and it's not a popular song on the album, but it's really meaningful to the artist and it means a lot. It, it wasn't written to be popular. It was written because the artist wanted to express himself. And he said he'll see Jesus singing that song, uh, walking down the street, and Jesus will say to him that he really loves that song. Um, and it's so meaningful, more than any fan, to have Jesus really love one of your songs. So Jesus uh, takes an interest in you. He takes an interest in everything that uh, that you desire, everything that you want to achieve. He's, you know, all the gifts, you know, love, kindness, goodness, joy, peace, all, all the gifts, the fruits of the Holy Spirit and all the gifts, they all emanate from Jesus. Jesus will speak a prophetic word to you and talk about uh, your day in detail the next day. And uh, you'll, you'll walk through that day and you'll see everything that Jesus said happen, you know. And um, Jesus often uh, leads that to something that you're really desiring, you're really hoping for. And you'll meet Jesus and say, tomorrow this is going to happen and it's your dream come true. And you can't really, even though Jesus said it, you can't really believe it until the next day when it's actually happening. And there's a future in heaven and 
there's unknowns in heaven and when you get to heaven uh you don't know everything you're not all knowledgeable you you grow in your knowledge just like on earth you don't know everything about everything the same is true in heaven some people have been in heaven uh for thousands of years and that some of them don't know as much as matthew uh so some people get to heaven and they're happy just to be in heaven and they don't really pursue jesus or pursue growth in heaven and some people um don't feel worthy or they've got feelings of worthy unworthiness or pain or trauma in their life and they're working through that so everyone's at different stages in heaven so jesus can prophesy and prophets in heaven can prophesy and uh, jesus is just so amazing I, I just love him uh so much and he he's made me so happy with the role he gave me in heaven, uh, I, I feel so honoured uh, that he gave me the role over women to speak into women's lives. And I'm so happy uh, that he gave my uncle the role that he has. And uh, Mordecai is very well respected. And oftentimes see Jesus and Mordecai walking through a forest or walking walking uh, through a stream. And I will have just been led down to visit the forest or a waterfall and I see my uncle sitting on a seat with Jesus having a deep and meaningful talk and when when you're with Jesus no one can disturb you like uh it's got protocol in heaven uh, people want to approach but you don't approach and you leave people and when Jesus is with you you're the only one in the universe and Matthew uh, f for one stage in his life thought he was Jesus favorite person and uh, he met a, a pastor and um, people, uh, a worship leader from a church, and they actually thought that they were Jesus' favourite person. And it came up in conversation, and they were all saying, that can't be possible because Jesus told me I'm his favourite. And uh, tends, tends to work out that everyone's Jesus' favourite person. And when you're with him face-to-face, uh, he really lets you know that you're his favorite person and he loves you and the whole universe revolves around you when you're face to face with Jesus. And there, there's no answer he hasn't got. And the only limit to what Jesus will say to you is what you're not willing to ask or not what you're not prepared to ask. And that's what uh, makes uh, these interviews so good that you do, Tulu, that um, you do so much research into it and sometimes your research uh, overcomes Matthew's knowledge of, of that thing. And Matthew can be lazy when it comes to research and he's never researched anything in his life. And, uh, and uh, so he requires uh, no, his own knowledge and sometimes that fails him, but you're willing to research and Jesus does research on us. And he, he knows, he knows the actual day that you need to know something. He knows, uh, what will surprise you he knows what will make you happy he he he'll have a like a a, a phone a, a, a ipad with him and he'll turn the ipad on and it'll be this song you discovered the day before and he'll start talking to you about a song that really impacted you and 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 he'll say these are the reasons i like it and you find he he may share five reasons that he likes and three of them are the reasons that you like it and that's why it caught your attention the day before in heaven and here he is with a song that's only been out for one day and three out of the five points he likes it too and really resonates with your spirit out of all the songs that you have on your ipad he pu pulls up one that really impacted you for the first time in a year that really impacted you and he pulls up the song as He's reading your mind and he knows what happened yesterday. And he communicates really well with the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit and him communicate. And he has inside knowledge and he knows everything about you. He knows all your fears and worries and struggles. And people in heaven have fears and people in heaven have worries and people in heaven are growing. People in heaven aren't mature. People in heaven need to go from glory to glory. And... Um, and so Jesus is wonderful. Thank you, Esther. That was really an extensive uh, response to being able to learn more about Jesus. My next question is, what's your favorite hobby in heaven? What do you like to do? I uh, I really uh, I really enjoy 
uh, uh, reading, uh, and uh, I, I really enjoy reading. But uh, some some books, uh, uh, actually they 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 make a whole novel uh, into a play, and you can mm-hmm. watch a whole novel perform like. A three hundred page novel can be played on a stage, and instead of it being an hour and a half, it can be a fifteen hour play. So you can read the novel, and then you can go to the theatre, and they have screens to show everyone on the screen up close, and you can sit in this theatre and watch them uh, act out your novel. And uh, it's crazy, you know, what heaven is capable of. I, I read a lot of fiction in heaven, and you wouldn't think. Uh, that fiction uh, is is uh, still possible and still in heaven, um, and uh, and uh, yeah. So I read a lot of fiction. Uh, you learn a lot in fiction, and the fiction writers in heaven uh, put a lot of truth. I I, uh, I find that I'm able to take in a lot of truth uh, through fiction uh, instead of concentrating on, on non-fiction. So I go to the movies in heaven. I go to those. 12 and 15 hour plays and uh, I uh, read novels and uh, I advise the women. I, I really like uh, doing lectures and conferences and teaching women. Um, I Men can come and learn, but um, I've got a special calling for women. I can't hear you. Sorry, I'm mute to myself. What advice do you have for Christians today? Um, I I would uh, encourage you, this is similar to a uh, question before, but I, I'd encourage you to uh, go after intimacy with Jesus. Uh, out of, out of in- intimacy flows all the gifts, flows all the fruit, flows all the accomplishments of a Christian in a Christian's life. And uh, um, the closer you are to Jesus, the closer you are to God, uh, the more things will work for your life. Um, I encourage people to learn how to walk in the Spirit and be directed by the Holy Spirit. Matthew's estimation is only 2% of people that go to church uh, walk in the Spirit. So Romans 8.14 says, those that walk in the Spirit, these are the sons of God. So many people think they're sons and daughters of God. Many people declare that they're a son of God, but they're not walking in the Holy Spirit. So uh, you learn, need to learn how to walk in the Holy Spirit. You learn, need to have intimacy with Jesus. You need to find your purpose and go after your purpose. 80% of Christians have got no awareness of their purpose in life. And so you need to learn that. So uh, develop intimacy, learn to walk in the Spirit and uh, know your purpose. Thank you, Esther. The story of your life has been so inspirational for many like me. Each time I read it, I'm always in awe of what God used you for and your Hongkou Modekai for the people of Chiu. How do you want to be remembered? As a queen. As, mm-hmm. as a conquering queen. Our kingdom went on and conquered. Uh, I did many great exploits with my husband, not recorded in the Bible. And uh, I made uh, my my husband's name great, great. You wouldn't even know my husband's name if I wasn't in the Bible. Um, mm. And uh, so I, I made him of great reputation. And uh, he, um, he uh, walks and talks with Jesus. And he's a really good friend uh, with God and... Uh, he consults with kings and former kings, and um, Prince uh, Philip uh, knows my husband and uh, has met my husband, and the Queen of England uh, met my husband, and uh, my husband advised them, and he advises uh, kings and queens that uh, come to heaven, and uh, so um, I, uh, my husband is the is the hero in the story. He didn't have to. Mm save my people and it was all because of him i i became his chosen possession because he had a good eye he chose me because it was him and god had his hand on him like king cyrus uh like um allowed the jews to rebuild the temple well my husband uh, should be glorified the same as him 
Mm, thank you. Thank you, Esther. My last question is, what message do you have for Matthew to encourage him? I know he's been facing some challenges in the past few days. Uh, I just want to uh, encourage you that uh, you've been wondering about your health and being able to walk certain distances and you can't walk a certain distance without getting a sore back. And you've been wondering about your breathing, walking upstairs uh, makes you really puffed and You'll, have a, you'll be able to survive, so don't let uh, worry beat you down. Uh, if you can't get to sleep tonight, just entertain yourself and stay up all night. You've been fighting this uh, mental illness for 30 years and you've, you've been getting through things. You've become more and more beautiful. You, you, uh, you really encourage people. You really bless people. You're a real uh, blessing to people and... Uh, uh, you, you interviewed uh, 30 or 40 or 50 saints before this, and it got you to a stage uh, to meet Tulu and do these extensive in interviews. And um, you really are being used to uh, bless the people of heaven. They, they, um, you really are their hero. You really are someone who means a lot to you, uh, to them. And they, they hear the saints uh, speak. Uh, through you and and our messages really touch and influence uh, the people of God here, but they see your face doing it. They see the lighting on your face. They see the smile on your face. They 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 see you itch when you turn the video on. You start itching yourself, and they see your obesity. They see you overweight. They see. Uh, everything about you in the natural that people would find offensive or find not so good. And they, they hear your language and uh, they, they hear your answers. And sometimes they hear your answer in my answer. And uh, sometimes our, our answers are really resonating. And um, if you were asked the same question, you'd give the same answer as some of us. Um, but um you really carry our voices really well. You're really made for this. And uh, for years, uh, you've been laboring in this thing. And um, so don't worry about uh, your sore back uh, and walking places. There may come a time where whenever you have to go somewhere, uh, instead of walking, you might catch a taxi. And don't worry about uh, your place becoming a bit untidy. You can... Um, you can have a carer come and clean your place and don't worry about the shortness of breath. I will limit your mobility so you're not short of breath. And don't worry about your sleeping and not being able to sleep. You've been handling that for 30 years. Um, you're just getting better and better and better. Everything you do, you're becoming more refined and better and a better example of us. And we really love you. We dearly love uh, watching uh, these interviews and um, I uh, really enjoy sitting and watching all that come before. I honestly got a real shock when Tulu picked me. It's like, for us, it's like being in a lottery. It's like our, our numbers have come up. It's like one in a million chance and uh, our name gets picked and we we sit over Tulu as she writes the questions and heaven is watching the questions come out and we watched uh, interview part one and part two and she skipped over a whole lot of questions and some of the saints were wondering, why did you skip that? And she informed you that you, you didn't know the backstory to the question, so it would have been harder for you. And we uh, we wait uh, and, and anxiously uh, listen to everything you have to say and some of the rebukes that you've been giving uh, through the saints have really been rebuking the people of heaven and... Um, uh, it's not so much financial giving in heaven that resonates. Uh, 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 we hope that it's resonating with the people on earth, but it's sacrificial giving and our time and laying our lives down. And uh, that sort of giving in heaven uh, needs to be reinforced. And we need to give 20 or 30% of our time to other people and not pursue ourselves. And, um, Tolu was a bit surprised that there's flash in heaven and uh and and there can be and uh everyone has to grow. Otherwise in heaven people would be robots too. They've got to have the 
um, freedom to obey the Holy Spirit in heaven. Holy Spirit's way is best, but they can still operate uh, in flesh. And that may be a surprise and heresy uh, for some people, but um, God just doesn't pop out uh, perfect people. So we're really uh, encouraged uh, by uh, these interviews and Satan is just assailing you with a whole lot of things and you just need to, if you can't get to sleep at night, uh, watch some shows and if you lie in bed for hours, just talk to us and we'll get you to sleep or we'll talk to you for hours. Um, we love you and and we really respect you and uh, we really honour you and um, all of heaven wants to meet you and this is the way that they get to meet you is they watch you get ready uh, for these interviews and they they watch this and you're taking up a lot of uh, heaven's time and uh, they're willingly stopping everything they do and they they plan from 8 o'clock, 8.30 on, on a weeknight in Australia. They, they plan to set aside everything and uh, listen uh, to what you have to say. And um, so I really love you and... Uh, I know that uh, you've seen me and I'm extremely uh, gorgeous to you, uh, like uh, Mary Magdalene, and you refuse to look at me because of the lust that's uh, in your eyes, but you've seen my dress and you've seen what I look like. And uh, I want to uh, become your friend sometime. God bless. Thank you. Thank you. So if you, if you liked uh, this series of videos, press like. Uh, if uh, you uh, want to comment on this uh, video, uh, please comment. Uh, if this is the first video you've seen of of, uh, of uh, Matthew Robert Payne's, uh, 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 subscribe to the channel. God bless you and keep you. Bye.